I'd like to thank Dr. Bajit Singh Sani for his words on um, the history and challenges of the Bubbers and their evolution from the Gutherites. I'd also like to thank his words on how some of the challenges that the Sikhs have faced throughout their history in our past and the ones that we're facing currently today. We'll start with our first question and answer period for the three panelists that we had this morning. Uh, we have two questions thus far. If you have any further questions, please write them on the index cards um, that are being passed around by the volunteers. If you want to address the question to a particular panelist, please write the name of that panelist on the card. We'll start with the first one. Attend, um, this is for Professor Son Singh Puni. What was the role of the Bande Matram organization started by Sarvakar and some other Hindu gentlemen and how far they succeeded in their efforts? Well, my field of study is the Gadar movement. To be honest with you, I know nothing about the Bande Matram organization or Savarkar or any other people. I made reference to Bande Matram newspaper which was being published by Madame Kama from Paris. And again, that was with the reference to by Muncha Singh to he took his poem when he referred it. You know, so I apologize for that, that I do not have much knowledge about Bande Matram organization. As I said, my field of study is Gadar movement. There's another question for me. Gadar Lahab, agar gulami be insafi na brabri pa sangarsh si, ta is vich sirf 90% to upar sikhi kyun shamal hoi? Baaki paarti, Hindu, Muslim, sirf na matar hi kyun shamal hoi? Kete e ta nahi ke sikha apni gwa chukki azadi nu, Paradi Azadi Bicho Behdesa. Ki Karasan Baki Party Komane Sikh Gadar Lab Betna Ai. Well, Sikh Gadar Lab, which the Kissing on ANC, or Sikh Tam Sikh Gadar Lab, but the Sikh of Hindu Kim or Muslim Manichim. So the question was this why didn't the Hindus and Sikhs came to the Sikh Gadar movement? I wonder why would they come? If it's a Sikh Gadar movement, why the Hindus and Sikh uh, Muslim would come in? Then only the naturally, if it's a Sikh Gadar movement, naturally only the Sikhs would come into it. So anyway, coming back to 90% Sikhs and the Gadar movement, I think I didn't say that there were 90% Sikhs and the Gadar movement. I said there were 90% Sikhs among the immigrants, Eastern immigrants in these countries, I think. That's what I said. Again, Accounting is a very funny thing. Once there was a CEO, he was going to hire an accountant. He was asking simple question, what is one plus one? So people would go in and inside they would say two. And they were you know, well qualified accountant and they were upset, what the hell is asking us? Then there was one somebody like you, very smart. When he went inside, he said, you know, same question, what is one plus one? He said, sir, forget what is one plus one. You tell me what do you want, I can make anything for you. <laughs> so that's what accounting is. How do you account the sacrifices? That you know, we seek, we include the 23rd cavalry, which was at Miami. They participated with the color. So they are our martyrs. But we forget the 5th Light Infantry in Singapore, 150 of them were executed by the firing squad. Are they martyrs of the other movement? Depends how do you make that. Counting, you know. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Our next question is uh, open to any panelists. Um, what needs to change? What needs to happen to change the character of the present day Sikhs to match the character of the freedom fighters? Sorry, I'll repeat the question. What needs to change in the character of present day Sikhs to match the character of freedom fighters? I assume it means the freedom fighters in the past.
Hello? So what needs to change? What needs to change? What needs to change in the characters of present day Sikhs to match the character of freedom fighters in the past? It's a, it's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> And, and I don't think it can be answered in just next half an hour. But a lot of things. We need to go back to our morality, our humanity. We need to understand Sikhism, what it is all about. There are, there are too many cooks who spoil the broth. There are too many leaders who spoil the arguments of any nation. We need to have a good leader we need to understand what the Gadarites were looking for. Up until last to last year or so, as all the efforts of this organization, like such as today, this was never a dialogue. So this is healthy. The dialogue has at least started. What did the Gadarites want? But mainly what I see from where I stand, the Sikhs really need to group together, understand the philosophy of Sikhism, everything will fall in place. Our next question is for Professor Sonson. Was the revolutionary Gadar party written transnationally in India, in the diaspora, or was it only in the diaspora? Has it been recorded? Was the revolutionary Gadar poetry, sorry, written transnationally in India, in the diaspora, or was it only in the diaspora? Has it been recorded? Meri saani matab ki jinni bhi gadar poetry ya, wo saari ni saari Canada, America bache likhi gayi si. So, baad de vich jodo second phase ya. Gadar movement da. after 1920s when it became a Marxist layer. At that time there were some poets in Panama, Argentina, Fiji. I came across with those poems. But 1914, 13, 15, 16, 17, in that period, to my understanding, only the poets which were in Canada and US, they were the only ones who were writing this revolutionary poetry. Next question is for Dr. Boonsing. How do you differentiate left-leaning thinking and Sikh philosophy? How do you differentiate left-leaning thinking and Sikh philosophy? Jime Som Singh Poonyunane Poetry no kon kita, the poetry ne brano no prayer. Gurwani ne mech mai ho sare yeh facts hai, message hai. Aaj mai shabda pakare sura so pehchani hai jo lare din ke hit purja purja kattu mare kabu na shade khe. Yeh yeh message hai, tariban pai chareyada jaapwa de brodara ek do hi mere jere si na. निज़म सोनसी पुण्य रणे हो मेंशन ही किता मैं हो तो अंडा संजय करना गदर दा कोई मेंबर किस तरह दा नशा नहीं बढ़तेगा कि मेरे का किसी पार्टी मैन रोज नहीं होगा इधर सारा जिरा सीखा बेसिकली सदांत गर्वानी दे बच्चों मैं दा जी निज़म मैं मैच की थे उन्हें दे प्रिंसिपल्स जब तो ना ये री मार्चस म गदर दी जरी प्लानिंग सी 1915s, 1930s गदर पार्टी बनी ते वो तो बच्चे ने गदर पार्टी ने दो मेंबर्स पाइसंतोक सिंह ते पाइ रतन सिंह नो रशिया पे जिया बे स्टडी करने वास्ते बे मार्चस्ट जरी और रेवोल्यूशन रशियन क्यों वो काम जब हुआ ते वो तो बच्चे सी जरी सी लहर फेल हो गई ते पाइसंतोक सिंह उन्� जहाँ जब इस सारी मुख्ता राशि श्रोमणी कुर्दार पर की बेटी, उन ना बोलों, इन्ना गदरियाँ नो, इन्ना जरे सच्चे सच्चे देशपाल सी अंडेट कर देना, ये भी एक कारण सी क्या? 
ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਦੋ ਗਦਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੀ ਜਾਦੇ ਐਕਟਿਵ ਹੋਏ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਸਿੰਘ ਲਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਕਾਮਿਸਟ ਵਿਚਾਰਧਾਰਾ ਨਾਲ ਪਰ ਅਖੀਰ ਦਮ ਤੱਕ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਮੇਰਾ ਮੈਸੇਜ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸਿੱਖ ਧਰਮ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵਿਸ਼ਵਾਸੀ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਭਾਈ ਗੁਰਮੁਖ ਸਿੰਘ ਲਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਮੈਂ ਪਤਾ ਸੀ ਬੜੇ ਤੜੇ ਖੰਡ ਪਾਠੀ ਸਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਆਪਣਾ ਪੱਲਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਛੱਡਿਆ ਸਿਧਾਂਤਿਕ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਰਹੇ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਕੋਈ ਮੂਵਮੈਂਟ ਚੱਲੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਭਾਈ ਜਵਾਲਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਬਾਬਾ ਵਿਸਾਖਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਸੂਦ ਹੈਗਾ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਲਹਿਰ ਸ਼ਾਮਲ ਹੋਏ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਆਖਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਬੱਬਰ ਕਾਲੀ ਲਹਿਰ ਉਹਦਾ ਕੀ ਕਾਰਨ ਸੀ ਜੰਪ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਚ ਫਰਕ ਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਕੰਪੇਅਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਮਾਰਸ਼ਲ ਪੋਲਿਸ ਦਾ ਜਾਰੀ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਕਹੂੰਗਾ ਇਹ ਵੀ ਕੁਝ ਕਾਰਨ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਨਡਿਟ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਉਦੋਂ ਕਿ ਲਹਿਰ ਚੱਲੀ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਸਤਾਰਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੁਝ ਗਦਰੀ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵਿਤ ਹੋਏ ਪਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗਦਰੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਸਾਹਮਤਾ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜੇ ਰਹੇ why do what canadians want why did the canadian government want indians to go to honduras and what was the report of 26 as they returned from honduras ਇਹ ਨਾ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਕਨਸਪੀਰੇਸੀ ਸੀ ਹਾਪਕਨਸਨ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਰੋਲ ਪਲੇ ਕਰਦਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਮੀਰ ਸੀ ਵੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਪ੍ਰੇਰ ਲਾਂਗੇ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪੋਨੇ ਨੂੰ ਸੈਕਟਰ ਟੋਟਲ 5200 ਸੀ ਮੈਂ 5000 ਦੇ 5200 ਥੋੜੀ ਵਾਲਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਨੰਬਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਜੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਭ ਲਗਾਤਾਰ ਯਾਤਰਾ ਵਾਲਾ ਕਾਨੂੰਨ ਸੀ ਪਾਸ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਸਿੱਖ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਤੋਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੇਗਾ ਜੋ ਉੱਥੇ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਰਗ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਵਾਪਸ ਹਾਂਡਰਸ ਭੇਜ ਦਾਂਗੇ ਤੇ ਮੋੜ ਕੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਲੇ ਦਰਵਾਜੇ ਬੰਦ ਕਰ ਦਾਂਗੇ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਆਖਿਆ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਇਹਦੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਅਸਲੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਜ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਕਿ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨੀ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਰਗੇ ਚਿੱਟੇ ਮੁਲਕਾਂ ਚੋਂ ਚਿੱਟੀਆਂ ਕਲੋਨੀਆਂ ਚੋਂ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਆ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਆਜ਼ਾਦੀ ਵਗੈਰਾ ਦੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਤੇ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਦੀ ਆਜ਼ਾਦੀ ਦੇ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਕਰ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਦੋ ਕੰਮ ਕੀਤੇ ਸੀ 1908 ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟ ਪੈਸੇ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਬਣਾ ਕੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਲਈ ਦਰਵਾਜ਼ੇ ਬੰਦ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਸੀ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਕੰਮ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਏ ਹੋਏ ਆ ਇੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਖੜਾ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸ਼ਰਾਰਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਦੋ ਕੋਸ਼ਾ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਸੀ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਹਾਰਡਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਲੀਜ਼ ਹੈ ਉੱਥੇ ਭੇਜਣ ਦੀ ਸਾਜ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਿ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਦੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਕੱਢ ਕੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਭੇਜਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਤੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਹਿੰਦੂਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਫ ਕਰਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਜਦ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਾਮਯਾਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਹੋਏ ਤਾਂ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਤਰੀਕਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਨਾ ਮੰਗਵਾਉਣ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਜਾਣ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਇੱਥੇ ਆ ਗਏ ਤਾਂ ਪੱਕੀ ਸ਼ੌਣੀ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਬੈਠਣਗੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਜੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਨਾ ਆਉਣ ਦਈਏ 5-7 ਸਾਲ 10 ਸਾਲ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਕਮਾ ਕੇ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਚਲੇ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਸਾਡਾ ਖੜਾ ਛੱਡ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਜ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਨੂੰ ਚਿੱਟੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੁਲਕ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਚਿੱਟੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੁਲਕ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਜਪਾਨੀ ਚੀਨ ਨੇ ਰਸਗੇ ਹੀ ਵੈਸੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਸਾਥੋਂ ਹਿੰਦੂਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨੀਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਖੜਾ ਛਡਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸੀ ਨਾ Thank you for answering these questions. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. Uh there are two other questions left which we will get to at the end of the day. Um Thank you for the three panelists, Dr. Putin Singh, Professor Sohan Singh and D
professional writer, he was in the area when the riot broke out. So it's, it's very strange when you read it, because it's an article, all, it's a four week long series of articles about the Japanese on the Pacific coast and photographs of strawberry fields. And, and then in the middle of it, it talks about the Bellingham riot, about the Punjabis. It's just stuck in the middle of this article. So it was, it was kind of a, another one of these great lucky strikes of a historian, because I, um, I, I forget how I found it, but I, I wasn't expecting to find much about the Bellingham riot. It, it just sort of came up in a search, and then there were these photographs. So, but no, it had nothing to do with anyone named Collier. Thank you. Um, the next question, the next question is for Johanna. Huh? What does um, the history of organs and Sikhs, um, Sikhs in Oregon, what does this history tell Canadian youth, both white and non-white? So I guess the question is asking, how can this serve youth today, white and non-white? Um, I, I don't know that I can answer that, except that I think the biggest thing for me and, and what sort of sent me on the trajectory of this research is that our history is much more complicated than is often presented, and it's really important to ask those questions that get you to that complication. I think I would leave it at that, and that the story about that it's one, you know, that it's just a region. Um, you know, today people talk a lot about globalism, globalization, and that's been a process that's been with us for quite some time. And I think that one of the things that comes to me about this history is no matter how remote you think you are or how isolated a place seems, it's tied to these world processes. And I think that's, an, and it has been for a long time, and we need to practice history that way and to think about what we're in as being a product of that. The next question is, in history, we've seen events in San Francisco, Oregon, Washington, and BC, resulting in the movement of people up and down the coast. In your historical findings, did you find any organized communications between the communities in these locations? Um, it's not directed to anybody, so if anybody would like to take that up. Um, I have been looking at at some of this with the labor organizations and with the Exclusion League, and certainly the Exclusion League was trying to forge alliances. As I mentioned, Fowler was working from his office in Seattle with Vancouver, BC on having a, a meeting, and, and the headquarters for the Exclusion League was in San Francisco, so they were very interested in making these alliances. The labor unions certainly were, and this had started way before with the anti-Chinese movement in the 1880s, where the beginning of the Knights of Labor, they were organizing, they were using the anti-Chinese hysteria as an organizing tool. So, yeah, I think there have been linkages, and it's no accident that in 1885 to 86, you see anti-Chinese uh, activities breaking out all up and down the Pacific coast from, you know, California up through Washington. And I don't think it's entirely an accident that four days or five days, whatever, after the Bellingham riot, there was a riot that in Vancouver, uh, BC, that involved the Chinese, Japanese, and the, uh, the Punjabi uh, communities, um, in being attacked. So there, there certainly was a lot of, of cross-fertilization, either intended or, uh, or just happening because of people making connections. The newspapers also were very important in that. In Bellingham, often they're reprinting articles from BC about the, the Hindu hordes and all these terrible things happening and the numbers who are coming in ships into numbers of Asian, Asian immigrants coming into Victoria and Vancouver and saying we're fearing that a lot of them are going to come into 
Bellingham and they're quoting Seattle papers and San Francisco people were following the, uh, the anti-Japanese uh, issue with the 1906 segregation of Japanese children. So there was, there was a lot through the newspapers in, in a fairly small city like Bellingham with uh, 30,000 people. They were following what was going on in Vancouver, in Seattle, in California. And, and in Oregon to, to some extent, too. So was the question about, I'm not sure if the question was about the migrants' networks or about sort of anti-migrant organizing. I wasn't quite clear. Uh, it's, it hasn't. Okay. Nothing specific. Yeah, so I think what Paul said about the newspapers themselves, the mainstream newspapers were the biggest carriers of this stuff. And, you know, in every town that there were articles about Hindus that I found quote unquote Hindus that I found in Oregon were usually picked up from somewhere else and just passed along. As for the migrant networks themselves, I'm, I'm betting Hugh can answer this much more effectively than I can, but it seemed that news traveled with an incredible rapidity amongst migrants themselves, whether it was through the temples or just word of mouth and people traveling, and it's, it seemed like that that was a very effective news. Yeah, I mean, there weren't, in 1907, 1906, there weren't temples yet, but Bellingham very quickly got this reputation, as well as other places in Washington State, among Punjabis, as I said, don't get off the train. So very quickly, the news got up to Canada and got passed around with people who would get off the ships, that if you're going south, go to Oregon, go to California, don't stop in Washington looking for work. So I, I think... The networks, the evidence is, uh, and there are a few quotes that I've found of, of even years later, Punjabis saying, yeah, Washington, no good place, no good place for Hindu, or something, and they'll quote them in the newspaper. So Bellingham and Washington State had this reputation that got passed down, and in fact, it went all the way to the 1980s and 1990s when uh, Sikhs and Punjabis first started buying land uh, in Whatcom County. There was almost no, no presence. And they didn't really know about the Bellingham riot, but they just had heard through the grapevine that people weren't necessarily very friendly in Washington State. There, had, there was this reputation that had lingered on for decades and decades, but when I talked to people, when we first do, started doing the research, at the Gurdwara, the temple community, they said, we really don't, except what a few people have found online, we don't know anything about the Bellingham riot, please do the research for us. But they knew that there was this tradition of it being kind of a not a good place for, for Punjabis. Do you have anything to say about I think there's quite a bit you can know about this, and I think uh, maybe most people in this room know that the California community and uh, the Vancouver or Victoria community and in between, it's one. Uh, originally, the same people came in through Vancouver and many of them made their way down and they remained in touch. So in that sense, it's, 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 it's one and uh, one had all kinds of means of communication. People were going back and forth. Telegrams were going back and forth. Uh, you know, it's we were in the 20th century, so uh, knowledge knowledge traveled, and it was you would be getting in touch with your brother in California. It's not uh, not that uh, surprising. Uh, and as far as uh, labor uh, communications, actually there was a very close connection between labor activity here and in California and there were a great many Americans here. In certain industries, the mining industry, it was uh, heavily uh, uh, populated by Americans and American business. Um, so th this border, which we is, has become something of a wall in the last uh, decade, um, was very fluid. Uh, then and so a passage back and forth initially before the Americans along with the Canadians began to try to exclude Indians 
Initially, all you had to do when you headed south was show your British uh, passport, show that you were uh, from a British colony and they, they were, you walked across the border without difficulty uh, as a Punjabi Sikh. Although, although some were sent back. Um, I'll just tell a story. It makes a difference when we're talking. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I wanted just to mention one personal story that illustrates also the networks that were not just among Sikhs, but had to do with villages, with non-Sikhs. I interviewed, as I mentioned, the descendants of Tuli Singh Jol. He came with a group of villagers, mostly Sikhs, but one non-Sikh, who stayed in Victoria, the rest of them went to Washington, then went to California, but he stayed in touch his whole life, and his family and his sons were in touch with this villager um, who was Hindu, but who was very friendly with the Sikhs and really socialized at the Gurdwara in Victoria. And, um, they kept in touch even though it was across the border and cross religions, but they were friends, they were buddies from their village. So I think the village ties really kept people together from that example. Thank you. Um, for time, I'm going to just go through one more question. Uh, this is for Dr. Paul Engelsberg, and I'm sure um, the rest of the panel can speak on this too. We've noticed that there's been a lot of sacrifices in the community, but nobody recognizes this service until after the individual dies. Um, and then we write their name in history. How can the community change this so that we recognize the struggles in the now, in the present? Well, I actually, in my research, because I wasn't looking at people who died, just people who were driven out, I, I found that uh, the, the one person who is in the history chronicles who talked about Bellingham, Tuli Singh Joel, who I mentioned, he lived to the uh, ripe age of 99 and a half, and he was celebrated in his lifetime for service to the community. I think now, after he died, there's actually a road in Yuba City that they are calling Tuli Road or something, but he was recognized in his lifetime, and I think um, that these days, it, it seems like a lot of the elders are being recognized. Uh, so I guess maybe I'm not a good person to answer this question because I'm not really looking at martyrs in, in my research, but I don't know if others want to speak to that. Well, my first thought is, of course, it's, it's being done and being done. Uh, and so we, we do have uh, thanks to the efforts of members of this community, uh, we do have a monument at an English Bay, and we do have a museum in the Kosadawan uh, Gurdwara in Vancouver, and we do have recognition of the Abbotsford Gurdwara as a, an historic site, and I could probably go on. But uh, all of this has taken effort, and people have made the effort, and they know how to do it. I guess if you want to do it, you go speak to one of them and find out how. But I, I think the, the recognition that has worked in Bellingham for these events and that they're working on in Astoria that Johanna's been involved with have involved bringing communities together, that the Sikhs have joined together with, uh, with other people and with civic officials religious people from other faiths and have joined hands and, and said this is, as I mentioned, it's not just a Sikh story, it's an American story. I, I think that's a really important question because if I'm understanding the question right, it has an assumption underneath it that it's not enough to sort of recognize the past and the past and then say, okay, we're good now. Because I think unless you get to that point of understanding why those stories haven't been a part of our history, it's, that's going to continue. And that's, I think, probably one of my biggest preoccupations about this research is I was propelled into it by post-9-11 politics in the States. 
because I think that attitude about alien, you know, immigrants are not citizens, they don't belong, it persists, and I, I think as a society we need to come to grips with that. I think commemorating things is an important part of that, putting it in our landscape so people have to deal with that is an important part of that, but that, that whole narrative has to be taken apart. And I would just add, being in education, I think it has to get into our schools, elementary schools, high schools. You know, when people are studying civil rights, studying history, studying immigration, these stories have to be included and we have to demand as parents, as community members, don't just talk about Martin Luther King or something that's far away, that these stories are important. You know, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Punjabis, the Muslims, you know, we need kids to learn about these stories. It's, that's part of our history. And it's not just African Americans who should study African American history. It's not just Sikhs who should study Sikh history. We need to learn about each other. Thank you to our panel, uh, Dr. Hugh Johnston, Dr. Paul Engelsberg, and Johanna Ogden uh, for your insightful discussions. Um so for the next 15 minutes, we're going to have our question-answer segment. Um, the first question is directed towards Dr. Jasbir Singh. The question asks, what are we gaining when we call it Sikh Gadar? Whether it, sorry, I'm just going to finish reading. Whether it makes any difference if someone became a socialist, a communist, they all stand for human rights and equality. Yeah, why simple? Why we are doing this? Why it's a sick gather we call it? But we are trying to correct our history. We are part of the North American history now. All the evidence we are putting together to correct our history. If you see our movement between 1907 to 1918, there was all started from Gurdwaras and all the evidence shows that the inspiration was from Sikh Gurus. It was only 22 or 27, as I told you, that Son Singh Jos tried to change the what so Sintok Singh, whatever he wrote on the banner, and he tried to change it. So we are just basically, we are not trying to fight with communist or bad or anything. But if you see, they always say that whether it's a communist influence or a second influence or a western influence, with the data of the, of the scholars from American scholars now or from the Gurmukhi scholars now, if we put together everything and we try to see what was the source of inspiration and what was the origin, that is the purpose we are trying to put the correct the history between 1907 to 1918. There is a clear cut evidence that there was no communist influence. No doubt, socialism, communist is the same thing, okay? But for the communist, if, not, if everything written from Guru Granth Sahib, the, the whatever the Hittite people wrote, why did they change? Because it was religious. It was not religious. This was again a social. Sikhism, if you read Guru Granth Sahib, there is a social thought there, there is a political thought. It is already ingrained there from 1604, 69, Guru Gopi created the Khalsa, and that was the inspiration. We are just trying to correct our history, that's what we are trying to, we are not going to change, we are not going to saying anything to the communist or socialist ideas. Those are, uh, ideas are already ingrained in Guru Granth Sahib. We just want to correct our history, that's what we call it. Just we don't care, it's a matter of history. If you look at Guru Granth Sahib's philosophy, you know, I found it very interesting. Sardar Kapoor Singh, who is a Hindu scholar, 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 the Hindus <laughs> are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be 
ਉਸ ਦੀ ਕਨਵੋਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਲਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮਿਸਿਸ ਲੈਰਨ ਨੂੰ ਸੱਦਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਨਵੇਂ ਨਵੇਂ ਜੇ ਸੋਈ ਜੂਨੀਅਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਾਜ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਜਦ ਮਿਸਿਸ ਲੈਰਨ ਦੀ ਉਹ ਇੰਟਰੋਡਕਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਚਾਂਸਲਰ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਾਡਾ ਬਣਾਣਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਫਰਾਣਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਤੇ ਦਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੀ ਵਾਰੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਦੇ ਵੀ ਮੇਰੋ ਕਾਮਰੇਡ ਫਰਾਣਾ ਉਹ ਹੁਣ ਖੁਸ਼ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਕਾਮਰੇਡ ਮਤਲਬ ਇਹ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੀ ਆਈ ਸੀ ਯੂ ਬਿਲੀਵ ਇਨ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਸੋ ਉਸ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਯੈਸ ਆਈ ਡੂ ਦੈਨ ਹੀ ਰਿਟਰਡ ਦਾ ਫਿਲਾਸਫੀ ਆਫ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਹੀ ਸੇਡ ਇਫ ਦੈਟ ਹੈਪਨ ਟੂ ਕੋਇਨਸਾਈਡ ਵਿਦ ਯੂਰ ਫਿਲਾਸਫੀ ਦੈਨ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਵਨ ਸੋ ਦ ਫਿਲਾਸਫੀ ਆਫ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਇਸ ਇਨਹੈਰਿਟ ਇਨ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਵੀ ਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨਾਮ ਜਪੋ ਵੱਡ ਕੇ ਛਪੋ ਕਿਰਤ ਕਰੋ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਕਿ ਨਾਮ ਜਪ ਉਹਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਨਸੈਪਟ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਬਾਕੀ ਤਾਂ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਵੱਡ ਕੇ ਛਪੋ ਕਿਰਤ ਕਰੋ ਸੋ ਥਿਸ ਇਜ਼ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਇਨਹੈਰਿਟ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਟੂ ਥਿਸ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਰੈਡ ਦਿਸ ਚਿੰਦਰ ਨਾਸਨਿਆਲਸ ਬੁੱਕ ਐਂਡ देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन दैट कम that all gadris even if you read uh, her the alls uh, uh, essays so all gadris even arya samaj is and other their one stress is they approach the sikh battalions and uh, they are sending people in the sikh battalions to mutiny uh, not to any other somebody asked uh, chindanath me why you don't go to bengal or others they say first the sikh battalions they will revolt and then we will follow later so only sikh can of a one or two of you the muslims uh, battalion but not so their whole concentration all gadris whether hindu sikhs and muslims their main concentration was on the sikh battalions and they expected that they are a big number and they going to bring uh, india's freedom just to finally at, at the time the gurdwara started here there were from 1906 onward there were three pedantic centers new york chicago and san francisco no pedantic center helped any other right rather on the contrary it was the pujari of san francisco actually who went against he was becoming informer for the british here and he wrote, told them about allah har dayal so there is nothing we are not this is not we are not telling like hindu or sikh but we are just trying to correct our history thank you the next question asks canadian sikhs collected funds from all across canada and established punjabi language literature and sikh studies uh, chair at ubc 1986 this one's directed towards dr man um why is it that the chairholder was not invited to this event yeah there is the i think chair holder was invited let me tell you about this chick chair we all started i think the people who started like mota singh all of they can tell more kajan singh all people on the east side we were all concerned when we started that was the first thought we think that you we should have a sick chair that's how the chair was started but the first person that took was hajjot obray when his book came he tried to push sick he tried to finish the independence of sikhism he tried to go more towards his book was about sanatani sikhism but uh, then we had a problem then again we worked hard to revive this chair not after murphy here in december yeah i came all of knows uh, the john sahab knows john sahab is a part of the federation which has signed the contract with the university we invited her we even told her that uh, if you can't come he, she wrote back that she's going somewhere outside station to some other conference we told him that please come or at least this very important conference and or if you can't come you send us your student send your message to us she was invited but why she didn't come or you know send a even a note to a student or some 10 minutes i don't know i think federation should ask them thank you next question is for amrik singh history is a lesson for present and future problems what do sorry what do you suggest to the sikh community to fight against present problems the community is facing today and the problems are because we can see obviously on such topics how much interest the community has unless you understand the pain what where the pain is Uh, how can you diagnose 
the problem is diagnosed and uh, we uh, are not able to diagnose it yet. And unless uh, we go back, how we became victims? And victims we are because of ignorance. And we are emotional people who try to solve our problems with emotion uh, without uh, complete knowledge about where we are at. That's the problem. Thank you. And the final question, I believe, is towards Dr. Gurmail Singh. Um, is it possible to get the copies of all the Gadar, Gadar papers? I'm thinking they mean like the old newspapers. Uh -huh, yes, uh, the, uh, the bibliography you need. What was the name? Yeah, the, uh, the Gather Poetry is available uh, as a Gather Poetry uh, editor by uh, Professor Kesha Singh. You can get it from uh, almost any publisher in India. Uh, not, it's not a Punjabi university. I think uh, it's Punjabi university. You can get that paper, uh, copy from anywhere. Punjabi university. Uh, where yeah, he has. Uh, uh, he has put all those Gaza papers together, cyclo styles in the original, and uh, bound and uh, um, if somebody wants that, you know, I try to get some copies, Dr. Jasbir Mark will get you one because the person who has them there, he doesn't answer us. But it is available though, the whole paper is bound in one book. We will try to, I think, just keep in touch with Mr. Ram Singh Jawal once we get the book, okay, we can get the through. So that wraps up the third session. I just wanted to thank you uh, one more time to Dr. Jaspir Singh from LA, Dr. Amrit Singh from Sacramento, and Dr. Gurdil Singh from Fresno. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, we will be beginning now the fourth session. Actually, before we start the fourth session, uh, let's just take a moment of silence for one minute uh, in commemorating um, the Ghadar movement and all the Shaheeds. So a moment of silence starting now. Thanks to uh, Professor Thaliwal for that passionate uh, presentation. I'd like to thank all three uh, speakers, um, Mr. Handel, for a great presentation as well, and Mr. Prabhjot uh, Singh for standing in for Mr. Rahi. And now we'll open the floor up for some uh, questions, if you guys have any more. I have some questions here for, um, they're all directed at Mr. Handel. Um, first question is, did Lala Hadia play a double, double agent role for the Germans, Americans, and the British during the Gother movement while his real loyalty was with the British? Second question was, was Lala Laj Patrai a credible player in the Gadar movement and what was his role in the independence of India? And how actively Lala Hardial played a part in organizing the Gadar movement and what kind of sacrifices did Lala Hardial make in kicking out the British from India? These three are pretty similar, so I'll get Mr. Uh, Handle to answer these. Lala Hardial has been blown up in the history of Gadar to proportions much, much higher than he actually was. The question asked, was he a double agent? Um, I have no proof, no backup, backup data, nothing to indicate that he was actually a double agent. There's, there's not much in the history of Gaza that anybody has ever accused of him as a double agent. 
What role did he play? He certainly did not play any leading role. He did play a role in the beginning. Did he make any sacrifices? When you don't play a role, there's no need to sacrifice. His only sacrifice, if we can consider it that, maybe that he had to leave the country. He had to go to Europe. And, uh, but he was never a person who could, who, who stayed at one place. He was, tra he has traveled to Mauritania, Algeria, Paris, Hawaii, because he was looking for a place to do some meditation. There's no question that he was an academic individual, he was a thinker. However, he was not a revolutionary, thus his role at best is negligible. Even though, yes, like all Indians at the time, he was emotionally attached to one or the other movements. But I would not consider him a Gadri as such. Uh, the next question here is, uh, it's a little hard to read, but... Um, Lord Radial, in one of his books, 12 Religions, I think it says of the world, he was a great follower of Duraste Conte, who founded August Conte, who founded positionist philosophy, which was clearly of humanist thinking, which is totally secular in character. Constantino, uh, will you list up this character of the movement? To claim to follow somebody is different than actually following them. Conte's philosophy of positivist was certainly very secular in nature, in nature and humanist. Since I have not read the book All Religions of the, the World by Herdeal, I don't know what language, what words he used to describe himself as a follower. Was he describing himself as a follower or simply as an admirer? There are two different things. You can admire somebody, still not follow them. How a person follows is indicated by two different things in life. How a person lives and what a person writes. Lala Hardeal's writings did, do not indicate he was an activist, he was a positivist. And the way he lived his life gives us no indication that he was an activist in life or a positivist in life. He was a pacifist. He come to realize, he come to terms with the life as is. He did not challenge the status quo, which is first requirement of any revolutionary leader or a revolutionary individual to challenge the status quo. He certainly did not do that. So he may have claimed that he is a follower of Conte, his positivist, a positivist theory, yet there's nothing indicated in his writings or in his life. I wouldn't consider him a follower, and certainly he was an admirer, and Conte's philosophy is something I admire as well. All right, so that brings to a conclusion uh, the last and final session. Um, thank uh, all the speakers uh, that presented today. And now I'm going to call on Mr. Pritam Singh Pollock to give some closing remarks and to do a das for the forgotten other about this. Mr. Pollock. Why Guruji Kar Khalsa? Why Guruji Ki Fateh? I first of all, I 
ਮਹਾਨ ਗਦਰੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸੱਚੀ ਸ਼ਰਧਾਂਜਲੀ ਭੇਟ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਾਰਾ ਖਿਵਾ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਤੇ ਬੜੇ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਬੜਾ ਕੁਝ ਕਹਾਂ ਪਰ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਕੀਪ ਇਟ ਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਿਵ ਮੈਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ਰਸ ਸਿਕਸ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਐਂਡ ਟੀਚਿੰਗ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮਾਨ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਾਥੀ ਕੈਲੀਫੋਰਨੀਆ ਤੋਂ ਐਂਡ ਫੈਡਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਸਿਕਸ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਦਾ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਫੰਡਰਸ ਆ ਆਬਵੀਅਸਲੀ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੈਨੇਡੀਅਨ ਸਿਕਸ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਐਂਡ ਟੀਚਿੰਗ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਮੇਜਰ ਫੰਡਰ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਿਕਸ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਦੀਵਾਨ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਨਿਊ ਵੈਸਟ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਸਰੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਪੈਸੇ ਦੇ ਬਿਗੈਰ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਕੰਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਚੱਲਦਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਹਾਲ ਦਾ ਕਿਰਾਇਆ ਬਾਕੀ ਲੰਚ ਦਾ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਖਰਚ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਤਾਂ ਦੇਣਾ ਹੀ ਪੈਣਾ ਸੀ ਭਾਵੇਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਆਈਏ ਤੇ ਭਾਵੇਂ 10 ਆਈਏ I thank uh, all the speakers who presented their well researched papers sade sauton do speakers ne dr hugh jones ne tho local ne inna ne bahut changi research karke inna de paper padhyo and it is something i would like to our young people to read how they had been conducting the research every line they have written there is a reference as a proof and that's the way we have to learn from them <coughs> so i thank them sincerely <coughs> they all have given great information about how across the south our people suffered in those days they e mai apne aap de vich kyunki i came to canada in 1967 us vele de halat jehde san to me they were not very good i did not feel at home yes as long as i was at ubc i was okay but when i moved outside <coughs> it was a terrible situation the in the halatan de vich jinna de vich eh loki rahe bellingham che ya oregon che washington ya oregon de vich oh us te nalon vi bach sak te inna nu main apne halatan de vich samajhda ke main ohna de naal apni saanjh panna aur taan hi assi feel karange ohna de vaste qadar te maan je assi ohna de naal ਦਿਲੋਂ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਸਾਹ ਪਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੀਆਂ ਹਾਰਡਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਇੰਡੋਰ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਕੁਝ ਸਿੱਖਣਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੂਲੀਸ ਡਰਟੀਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਮੈਨਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਸੋ ਆਨ ਮੇ ਵੀ ਕੁਝ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਚਾਈਆਂ ਵੀ ਹੋਣ ਪਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਖਿਆਲ ਰੱਖਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਉਹ ਸਰੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਮ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰਦੇ ਦੇ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਦੋ ਕੋ ਲੇਡੀਜ਼ ਆ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਤਰਾਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਥੀਸ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਸਕਸੀਡ ਐਂਡ ਮੂਵ ਫਾਰਵਰਡ ਇਨ ਨਾਰਥ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਐਜ਼ ਗੁੱਡ ਸਿਟੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਟੂ ਵੈਲ ਇਕਨੋਮਿਕਲੀ ਕਲਚਰਲੀ ਸੋਸ਼ਲੀ I thank the moderators. I am really really pleased that they accepted the offer and they came forward and uh, I would urge them to please continue doing so. It's not only beneficial to the community, it is good for you, for your profession and in life. Public speaking is very important. Okay. <coughs> and I will also are the community to please trust them give them the leading role 
Yes, at the same time, I would ask them to please respect the elders. I thank the audience, no matter how small the audience is. I know I got upset uh, with one of the respected person. I, I respect him, but he had no regard. I asked him two, three times, Babaji, Chupro. And then I had to finally go and say, get out from here. So, as he in a Gumbir Masledute, I am on a Gadri Papian Shadangalia paid Karnaya, the Apia Gatha, his writer is on a picture Kareoki. I thank the audience and I thank the print media, news media for helping promote this news in the community. Yes, uh, I think Professor Gurinder Singh me that the people who are looking at all the people and it's a sad situation. It's a so-so dollar, two-so dollar, they can do a lot of the songs on the other side. They can do a lot of the songs on the other side. This is all the songs. We have to <coughs> have a good look in ourselves. As he counts on the Kerry Passion, Kerry Raf Alias, Ker Menton to push Kerry Sarzaki to see the table, but may I can't get a message up on that in Rujao, UK Miras Maria, Kerry Jina General of Mildana. I say it out, I don't shine. What has gone wrong? Here the India Banker Hall, the management of the Tanwat Karta, Kilmane, Sayog, the Ta, our passion, Sanu, support the tea, the ACE function, successful Kandi, Koshis Kiti. Take me up in Sari Committee, no issue to like it, the Nutome, the Tech Committee, which we can assure Kita was very up in committee, the Bache, Kaljanche. Great world the bad and they didn't give me. Or somebody taunted me. He was from UP. <laughs> Dr. Mathur, he met me at UBC campus. After a brief introduction, he said, What's wrong with your community? He was, I think he was in a good position uh, to go around, look at the mills and so on, and talk to people. He enjoyed eating pranthas and so on. I said, he said, father is there. After high school, his son is also working there. Why don't they go for education? At that time, I did not know the history here. Yes, sir, I could do the boot on the heart. Four years, I professional, professional degrees recognized on him, Kitan Jandia. The old Swede Loki discouraged away, party kick up. But सानु जागना पड़ेगा कि मैं बेंती करता हूँ कि अपने बच्चे आनु पढ़ाओ पढ़ने बगैर साड़ी कोई लाइफ नहीं देते पढ़ने बगैर ही यही रीज़न है कि ऐसी लच्छता दिन ते पहले स्पेंड करते हैं पर ऐहो जो फंक्शनल दे बीचे जितने वेल क्वालिफाइड स्पीकर्स विद वेरी गुड पेपर्स दे आर रीडिंग एंड वी हैव नो प in that which came down, yeah, I'm going to come in on the last now, I'm going to take a picture of the car, you see. Yeah, those pictures, they will say, those will be the Saudi Hall of the Sea, see, that they will property in that, you know, the Saudi Nani has left them there. Those will be Saudi and Hindu, can they have? Those will be on the name Mark, if they have the Hindu number one, Hindu number two, Hindu number three. तो उन आदेश का राज्य के भी ये ही लिखा होता है। तो ये सारी वो सोए की हालत से पर ऐसी और ठीक है कि एक पासे साढ़े पे या सर जरूर है कि ऐसी मेंटियां कर्त कर रहे हैं। सो कर्त शायद नहीं करने के सो कर्त कर रहे हैं, कर्त जरूर कर रहे हैं। 
ਪੈਸਾ ਇਕੱਠਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਔਰ ਪੈਸਾ ਇਕੱਠਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਕ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਬਾਈ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਦੈਟਸ ਨਾਟ ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਕੁਝ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਖਿਮਾ ਦਾ ਜਾਚਿਕਾ ਮੈਂ ਕੁਝ ਥੋੜੇ ਭਾਵਕ ਤੇ ਮੇਰਾ ਮਨ ਬੜਾ ਉਸੇ ਨਾਲ ਹਾਂ ਜੀ ਵਾਈਟ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਈਟ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਮੈਂ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰਾਂਗਾ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲ ਦਲੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੋ ਸਟੇਜ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਆਉਣ ਤੇ ਜੋ ਮਾਰਡ ਪੱਤਰ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਪੇਂਟ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਸਰਦਾਰ ਦਲੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਮਰ ਆ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਫੀਲਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੰਗੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਐਪ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਸਕੂਲ ਸਗਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲ ਵੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਦਿਸ਼ਮੇਸ਼ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਕੂਲ ਐਪ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰਾਂਗਾ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੇ ਆਉਣ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਚਿਰ ਉਹ ਸਟੇਜ ਤੇ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਫੇਰ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਤਹਿ ਦਿਲ ਤੋਂ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਰਦਾ ਜੋ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਵੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਦੇ 5 ਸਾਢੇ 5 ਵਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਬੜੇ ਹੀ ਪਿਆਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਸੁਣਿਆ ਇੱਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਵਧੀਆ ਬਿਰਤ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਥੋੜੀ ਆ ਪਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਉਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਐਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਫੇਰ ਤਹਿ ਦਿਲ ਤੋਂ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਮੈਂ ਨੋਇ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਪਾਲ ਐਂਗਲਸ ਵਰਡਸ to come on the stage and receive his honor thank you at next johanna ogden ਜਤਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੁੰਡਾ ਪੂਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਗਿਆ ਸੋਹਣ ਸਿੰਘ ਪੂਨੀ ਸੇ ਸਟੇ ਤੇ ਆ ਜਾਣ
ਗੁਰਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਧਾਲੀਵਾਲ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਜਸਵੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਮਾਨ ਬਲਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਸ਼ਾਹੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਣਾ ਪਿਆ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਵਾਪਸ ਚਲੇ ਗਏ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਰਾਜਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਰਾਹੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਵੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਹੁੰਚਾ ਦਿਆ ਇੱਕ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟਰੀ ਦੇਖੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਤੇ ਦੁਪਹਿਰੇ ਉਹ ਸਗੇ ਟਿੰਮੀ ਮਹਾਜਨ ਤੇ ਕਰਨਲ ਪਰਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਰੰਧਾਵਾ ਇਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਪਹੁੰਚਾ ਦੇਵਾਂਗੇ ਅਖੀਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਦਲੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਰਹਿਦਾ ਤੋਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦਿਆਂ ਜਿਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਾਡੀ ਪ੍ਰਵਾਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਆਪ ਦਾ ਸਭ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ